All right, so new Packers defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley just finished up his first ever press conference as the new defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. So in today's video, we're going to summarize everything that he said, kind of go over it, break it down, and man... I just want to say, this was an awesome press conference. Like, going into this, I kind of wanted to see the type of speaker he was, the type of coach he was, the energy that he had, and he checked all those boxes. Like, going into this defense, into the future of this Packers defense, I am very, very excited, and that just made me even more excited. Halfley was very well-spoken, as you'll see in the clips I show. Very high energy, which I'm extremely excited for, for this defense, for the staff, for all of these players. And it also seems like he's very similar to Matt LaFleur, and these guys are going to mesh really well. I feel like Matt LaFleur and Halfley are two similar coaches, and I think it's going to mesh really well in terms of communication and the way they coach. So let's get this thing started. Basically, uh, just going to be reacting to these clips from this interview the overall summary from today's conference. Jeff, we've heard about kind of your core beliefs as a defensive mind. Um, what have you heard? Everything. Uh, you, you just press man coverage every single snap. Not every snap. snap. <laughs> I like to press people. Um, does that change when you come to the NFL? I know you've obviously been in the NFL before, but how much do those core beliefs change when you see the personnel you have here and it's a different game in this league? Yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time in the NFL, right? The things I believe in defense or whether you're playing 3-4, 4-3, press man, which I do love, zone coverage, vision and break, quarters match. I mean, it comes down to can you, can you take your players who you have and put them in the best position to succeed? And can you take your players and maximize their ability? Like every player wants to get better, and that's our job to do. Our job is to put the players in the best position to succeed and make plays. And that's through scheme, right? People can say that a lot of the scheme is simpler, but it's, it's very detailed. We try to make it simple for the players so they can play fast, so they don't have to think, so they can be confident and not be afraid to make mistakes, so I can get them the information, we can get them the information that they need, so they can go out there and be fearless and play with their hair on fire and just run and hit and cover and get off blocks and tackle. And we got guys that can press, let's line up and get our hands on people. I mean, I think that's really important. You get a guy who can play his own third, who can read two to one, let's do it and go get the ball. You know, as we really piece this together, and, and I'm sure you know right now, and we're, we're watching it, we're, we're putting it together as a staff, um, but those core beliefs aren't going to change. That's how we're going to play, and our players should be excited about that. Um, I'm excited about that as a coach. So obviously the main takeaway from that one is that putting your players – in the best position to succeed, which is something I love to hear. It's a breath of fresh air for us Packers fans in terms of the defense because I think we can all agree that that was one of the problems under Joe Barry, even go back to Mike Pettin, where it seemed like there was a lot of players kind of out of position or not in the right position to give them the best chance to succeed. And I had some in inside information a couple years ago that uh, this was a big issue for the defensive backs. Uh, I heard it from Adrian Amos. Basically that Joe Barry wasn't really allowing these defensive backs to play their game, right? To do what they do best and allow them to succeed. So I really like hearing this from Jeff Halfley's perspective that he's going to take every single player, find out what they do best and how they can succeed the most and put them in that position. In college, um, but how do you know what you did there is going to work? in the NFL, how does what you did at BC translate to what you need to do here? Well, it's going to be a little bit different than we did at BC. At BC, you had to worry about the quarterback pulling the ball and running every single play. So you got to watch the film, you got to adjust. Um, I paid very close attention to the NFL. A lot of times at night, I turn on film and watch what very similar people, a lot of close friends I have on defense were doing, and I've stayed up to date on a lot of it. But then we've got a great staff. I mean, we've got, you know, Derek Ansley, who's just a coordinator of the Chargers, Anthony Campanelli, who I think is a star. I think he's going to bring energy. I think he is a brilliant football coach. We've obviously kept Reb, so I think did a really good job here. We've moved him to the D-line. I brought Vince Ogabasi, who was my assistant D-line coach. Um, he was with us in San Francisco as well, so he's been part of a very similar scheme, and he's a guy that I really trust. Um, and then Ryan Downer was actually a quality control coach when I was with the Browns. Totally different system, right? And that's the other thing. I've been a part of, I mean, I've been a part of a lot of different defenses. And again, it goes back to what, are the, what, are, what is this team going to be able to do best to allow us to win games? And whether those ideas come from the staff and we all put it together, I mean, that's, that's how I'm going to do it here. You know, I've been a head coach now, and I think that's helped me, and I think that would be a, 
I think that will help me be a better assistant. I think it will help me be a better coordinator because I'm more open to ideas now because I don't care whose idea it is. If it's the best idea and it's going to help us win games, then that's what we're going to do. So I also thought this was an amazing answer as well in terms of being a defense that can adjust. It's not just going to be one way or one idea. And it's not going to be just from Jeff Halfley. It's going to be from his entirety of the staff. He says he has a great staff, which I agree with, and they're all going to believe in each other. Or they have to believe in each other. They have to communicate. And it's going to be the best idea that gets put on field on Sundays. Not just, okay, Jeff Halfley thought of this, that's what's going to fly. And I feel like that was kind of the way with Joe Barry. It was it was Joe Barry's way or, or no way, right? Where I feel like now everyone in that staff is going to have a say. Everyone in that staff is going to bring ideas to the table and it's going to get all meshed together. Um, and that's going to create this Packers defense on every Sunday. And I'm all here for it. You've been in San Francisco um, with their style of defense. Then you, with Patton, it's a completely different style of defense. Where do you sort of fit in between that in terms of pressure and, and non-pressure, things like that? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. I think there's down and distances where you got to get exotic and you have to get after people and you have to pressure the quarterback. You got to get guys that can rush and you got to get guys that can cover, but you have to get after the quarterback. I think there's down distances situations where not as much pressure, um, but when you get when you get a chance to get after the quarterback, you have to. And as we build this thing, I think you're going to see some things that look a little bit more exotic, and then there's sometimes we look simpler. Uh, I think that's the key to all of this. I love hearing the term exotic here, right? You have to sometimes look exotic or give exotic pressures. And this is also something that I that I thought was missing from the Joe Barry scheme. Not so much Mike Pettin. Mike Pettin did an okay job of kind of giving weird exotic looks in terms of pressure. But in terms of Joe Barry, it was very straight forward. It was like, okay, we're going to rush four or three. And then sometimes maybe we'll bring in a gap pressure from a linebacker. Like that's kind of all it was with Joe Barry. And it was very predictable. Like if we're sitting here, you know, watching the game on Sunday and we can kind of predict when Joe Barry's going to bring pressure you sure as hell believe that that offense knows exactly when you're going to bring pressure as well. So I really like hearing this answer from Halfley. They're not just going to rush four in situations like, you know, it's third and long. Oh, just rush four because it's third and long, right? They're going to bring pressure when they need to bring pressure and pressure that offense, kind of go on the attack, which he, he states later in today's um, press conference as well, that the defense needs to kind of attack as well, something that the Packers defense hasn't done well in the past. And then also in terms of like the defense overall, it's just going to be a multiple type of defense. It's not going to be one way or the other it's going to adjust a lot they're going to bring pressure sometimes they're going to drop back sometimes really like to hear the adjustment of this upcoming defense and it's not just going to be one way what the, what traits are you looking for in the post safety post safety i like how you use that term that's good it's exactly what i would call him i want a guy who can erase things he we got to eliminate explosive plays when we play this defense so if a run hits up the middle, this guy's got to come out of the middle field with his hair, hair on fire. He's got to be able to get a guy down. I also want him to be a guy when a ball carrier's wrapped up, he goes and he finishes off the pile. I want a guy who can go from sideline to sideline and take the ball away. I think that position has to be a guy with high ball production. He's got to be a guy that can communicate and he's got to be a guy that can get guys lined up and make some calls back there. And I'd love a guy who can play man. So I guess I'm describing the perfect player to you. Um, but those are some of the traits that I would look for in playing that position. So I'm glad a question was asked about the potential safety or, or post safety, as they as they stated here in this in this question uh, of the Green Bay Packers, because that's a big question mark right now with Savage, Ford, and Owens all being impending free agents, and that's probably because. They want Halfley to kind of have his pick at his guy because it seems like that's a very important position in this defense. He mentions a guy that can erase things, a run support type of guy, a ball hawk, right, can create interceptions, high IQ, can man up as well. It's a very important position for this defense. And whether that's through free agency with a guy like Jordan Fuller, who he's coached before, there's other free agents um, at safety. There's a lot of options there. Or, or through the draft with someone like Tyler Newbin, Cameron Kinchins, uh, Kalen Bullock. There's a lot of guys that could potentially fit that. That mark and I'm really excited to see how this safety position you know transitions into this new defense under Jeff Halfley I mean you ask about style of defense the one thing that's probably most important to me even more so than X's and O's is the guys the coaches I mean we're in this thing together when you turn on the film these guys got to all be running the ball because they respect one another and they got to play they got to play together and you got to see that on the tape and, and that's that's one of the biggest things that 
you know, I'm going to stress with this group, with this staff, and the style of play we're going to play on defense. These guys got to love playing with each other, and they got to love each other. I also really like this answer because it just shows Halfley is all about teamwork and communication, where last year, Matt LaFleur in multiple press conferences talked about the lack of communication. Like, communication needs to be the first thing that you get right in a defense, and I 100% agree. So I really like to hear this answer from Halfley pretty much that he wants to communicate very well with this staff right and teamwork is a big thing and everyone meshing well together is very important that's always been important to me it's always been important to me to try to get to make the game simpler for players and that's the biggest thing you'll hear me say a lot I want to simplify it for them because I think part of me being a coach is I have to be a great teacher so I take all this information that I have and all these things but I make it very simple for you to understand so you can go out and play fast and aggressive and not worry about anything. I really like that Halfley keeps using the terminology of simplifying the game and more importantly, playing fast and aggressive. Fast and aggressive is something we have been asking for for a very long time. And I think you need to have a good balance of that, right? You want to play fast and aggressive, but you also want to make it easy on these players so they can play fast and aggressive. So again, I'm really happy with a lot of Jeff Halfley's answers. I feel like he, he, he nailed this interview, if I'm being honest. I'm wondering where you kind of stand on input from players because there's been a couple instances here over the years where maybe guys didn't feel like they were heard, it created some issues maybe for them. So how do you kind of view that as part of, of being a defensive coordinator? There has to be great communication, but I, I think first there has to be great relationships. These guys aren't just going to trust me when I walk into a room because I'm the defensive coordinator. I have to earn that from them, and they have to earn it from me. And then I think once you establish that trust and you develop a relationship, then you can have hard conversation. I mean, I, I, I picked Rondé Barber's brain on how to play nickel, and I learned more from him than any coach I've ever been around. He's probably one of the best nickels. He probably is the best nickel to ever play the game in that scheme, so why wouldn't I ask him those questions? Right? It's the same with Sherm, and, and I've talked to Sherm quite a bit uh, as I've already taken this job because I have a great relationship with him, but, but I'm a coach and he's in the room and I get there and I'm learning the scheme and he's seen three in a way that instead of saying I'm on the field, no, this is the way to do it. It's like, wait a minute, what did you see there and why would you do that, right? And then sometimes it was, no, I do it like this, but then sometimes it was, all right, I got it and I'm going to teach it that way from now on. So there has to be some give and take, but that has to be earned. And it's, it's, that's very, very important to me. Halfley makes a really good point here. It's not just the coaches that can implement things into the defense. When you have a very good player, he mentioned Rondé Barber in the nickel, right? Teaching him some things. And that makes sense, right? These, these, these Hall of Fame type of players um, or these really great players that are on defenses, if they come to a coach with an idea or a thought process, the coach should listen to that. And if it makes sense, the coach should adjust to that and build that defense around it. Because then, again, it circles back to putting that player in the best position to succeed. So if that player has an idea and it's succeeding, then you put that player in that position. You don't just go, oh, that's, that's not the way I want to coach it. Do it this way, right? But if a player also needs coaching, like Halfley said, you do coach them up. So again, a terrific answer here. Right? The whole key to this game on defense is we just can't give up free plays and let people score. We gotta make it earn we gotta make them earn it. And then we gotta take our shots at time and be aggressive and be the ones on attack too. We're not just gonna sit back and let them go down the field. I feel like that's kind of like a shot at Joe Barry. We can't just give up plays and let people score. Like that was pretty much the summary of the Joe Barry defense, the bend but don't break. And that's been a, a Packers philosophy on defense for a very long time now. And I'm glad it seems it's seemingly gone at this point. Not that there are certain situations where there is a bend but don't break mentality, but that's not going to be the mentality under Jeff Halfley. You got to be aggressive. You got to, again, play attack as a defense, not just sit back let them nickel and dime you down the field and hopefully hold them to a field goal. I hated that as a Packers defense, so I I'm really glad that's going to change. I don't know if you're going to find a lot of yelling. I think you're going to get a lot of coaching. I think you're going to see a lot of juice on the field from that staff, but that doesn't mean we're, we're yelling. And I, I mean, I want to be demanding, but never demeaning. But I want guys out there who have energy and enjoy being around. If we're going to ask the players to run around and and run to the ball and get after it, then our coaches need to be the same way. So I think there's a part of being cerebral, but when we get a chance to get out on that field, I mean, we got to go. This just really showcases his energy, right? Like he wants to be down on the field. He wants to be going through these things with the players. And it's not going to be a, a fear-based teaching where it's you're yelling at a player or you're reaming out a player per se. And I really liked the statement he said, I want to be demanding 
but never demeaning. I think that's a, a perfect like overall outlook as a defensive coordinator. You got to have change ups and you have to have calls that complement one another. Um, our zone coverages are built off vision and break. That allows guys to play fast. So they're not looking at people and looking around for people. The essence of playing vision and break coverage is when the ball's thrown, you have two or three guys going 100 miles an hour to the ball carrier. And you have to have compliments to that because a lot of times when you want to pressure, you can't play that style of defense. You have to be aggressive and get your hands on people. So I think there's a place for both. But I'm, I'm big on vision and break because I want to see as many people get to the ball carrier and as fast as we can over and over again. I'm glad he was asked this question because we've been hearing this a lot. Oh, press man, press man, press man. And he was asked this a couple times in this interview. And he says, why does everyone love press man so much? It's kind of been a running thing that's been going on since he's been hired that they're only going to run press man. Like that's the only type of cornerbacks they can, they can add to this building or draft. And, and I've kind of been saying this over the last week. Uh, Boston College only ran press man, I think like 34% of the time last year. Um, it was never going to be only one or the other. And of course, that's also college ball, which is different from the NFL. And Halfley has been a part of a lot of defense and a lot of different schemes. And I'm glad that he mentioned mentioning that his zone coverages are built off vision and break, right? A read and react. So clearly he likes his zone coverages as well. Again, it's about putting the players in the best position to succeed. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, the Packers defense isn't going to be just one way or just the other way or only aggressive or only soft or only man coverage or only zone. It's going to be a multiple style defense and I'm all here for it. So that's pretty much everything that was said in the press conference of importance. I just wanted to summarize this for you so you don't have to watch the entire press conference and also give my thoughts on this. And, and, and overall, man, I, I'm extremely happy with this hire right now. Um, I really liked it after it was announced, after diving down and kind of seeing the type of coach Jeff Halfley was. And I was very excited to see him finally talk, right? Talk about the Packers defense in a Packers press conference. And like I said, I think he nailed today. I think that was a perfect press conference. I enjoyed everything that he said. He's well-spoken, as I mentioned before. And I'm really excited about the future of this defense and the energy that him and that coaching staff is going to bring. But I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of this press conference? What do you think now of Jeff Halfley? And are you excited for this defense? But that about does it for this one. I appreciate you guys coming by. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go Pack Go.